find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters, ready to talk tech geek geeky here on the Awesome Cast live from Pittsburgh, PA, and uh, very excited. We got some uh, new in studio guests. Um, we'll get to them in a moment, but on the line, our regulars, John Chichilla, is joining us from from nearby Dormont, where they have That's... cool cool movie stuff going on. I'd like to speak about it later. Ooh, I haven't I haven't read about that. I'm gonna have to check that out. And also, Katie. The K Dutters on the Twitter is joining us out on as well. Back again. We we finally tracked you down. I know I've been hiding. I'm in a new location. You are. You are. This is this is a nice background. You're not. Are you? But but, but is your um is your 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 broadcast device of whatever it might be um um still still like on a cat pedestal like before? <laughs> no, it's on my Mac Mini. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using it to hold my laptop up it's, on my desk. It's very jumpy. <laughs> also, in in studio with us, representatives from the Ohio Linux Fest going on in Columbus here, and we'll be talking about that, is Susan Rose and Vance Kogendurfer. Howdy. Hey, you got it, it right yes. first time. Yes. <laughs> I worked really hard on that one. Uh, well, how are you guys doing tonight? Good. Doing great. It's great to be here on the Awesome Cast. It'll be mm-hmm. weird. We're talking about an Ohio thing, but it's only a three-hour drive. It's not bad. Exactly. It's not bad. I know friends that went for a Monday Night Raw over there. So um, Katie was one of them, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, but of course, this is the Awesome Cast where we talk about uh, tech things, geeky things, a uh, little bit of a Pittsburgh point of view. Um, you can check us out. We're here live Tuesdays around about 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. We're at least getting ready. Uh, you can join us at live.sorgatronmedia.com every Tuesday. Um, you can also check us out at awesomecast.net for all the shows, the links, and and, and uh, past shows and all that kind of stuff. Subscribe for us. Look for us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio in audio and video formats. Well, and we got clips over on YouTube as well. If there's anything special, uh, we want to share little tidbits. If you, you can share around. We got some reviews of uh, eco pens and, and battery chargers and who knows what else uh, Chilla finds on his desk that he wants to talk <laughs> about. Um, and, of course, you can contact us. We're on Twitter at AwesomeCast. We have AwesomeCast on Google Plus and Facebook. And you can drop us a line at AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com. Before we get going, I do want to put a quick plug out. Uh, coming up here, October 25th, where we'll be playing video games for 24 hours. The first year I get to get involved with this. I'm so happy my uh, schedule has has worked out for this. So I'll be here in the studio. I'm going to hook up the Xbox over there. We're going to do this thing. We're going to hook up with all the insertcointobegin.com people. We're going to do it for charity for 24 hours. Um, I'm doing St. Vincent's Ups in Erie, PA. Uh, everybody's picked their own hospital in the group. Uh, it's uh, a part of uh, extralife.org. If you want to find out, donate um you can go to uh for our url for for our little team which is banjo banjo ka 3e i believe um you can go to bit.ly slash that's bit dot ly slash extra life insert coin uh to go right to that page and find out more about what we'll be talking about here uh, coming up in the next two weeks uh, uh leading up to the event two weeks three weeks Math is hard. Um, so please go check that out, and please check out everything else over at insertcointobegin.com. So let's get started with our awesome things of the week. Um, first, let, let, let's get on with uh, Ohio Linux Fest. Uh, Susan, I ran into you uh, at another event uh, <laughs> over at the public market, um, and you got to tell me about this. So, so what are you guys doing over there in Ohio? Well, uh, October 24th, 25th, and 26th, We'll be at the uh, Greater Columbus Convention Center, and Ohio Linux Fest will be there. Have you ever been to an Ohio Linux Fest, or John, perhaps? Nobody? Um, I haven't. No, I haven't. Okay. Well, since 2003, every year we have uh, the Ohio Linux Fest, uh, which is a free and open source software convention, and and a whole lot more. So um, there's... uh, all different programming um, uh, presentations, as well as, well, Vance is going to give you a rundown of what's happening like day by day. 
But um, it's about learning, it's about community, and it's about networking. So uh, you get to meet all these like really cool, uh, free, collaborative, sharing uh, uh, computer professionals and programmers and whatever. And, and it, it doesn't matter what level of skill you're at. So for example, you can be submitting the most code to some wonderful project, or you could be just using Firefox on your computer at home. And, and uh, you don't have to be totally into a, a Linux operating system, although many of the people are. But, uh, but there's all different types of um, ways you can approach the free and open source software um, philosophy. And uh, now it's getting into free hardware as well, because uh, it doesn't do you any good to write a free and open source software program if you can't crack into your computer, uh, cell phone, or tablet in order to uh, install your own operating system or programs that are not necessarily talking to your version uh, of the operating system. So. Um, Free hardware is big and open everything, open government, open internet, open everything. So, so it's a whole movement of philosophy and it, it's not just with Ohio Linux Fest. There's all these Linux cons that are across the country, uh, Northwest, Southeast, Texas, Scale, OzCon. There's all these Linux um, uh, conventions throughout the United States and probably throughout the world too. So I think I've said enough. <laughs> uh, you can kind of tell I'm the social media community person for Ohio Linux Fest. There's the tux the penguin here. <laughs> <laughs> I was hiding behind my uh, banner. And uh, I'm the voice of Ohio Linux Fest for uh, Google, uh, Google Plus, uh, Facebook Linux, uh, the Facebook LinkedIn and uh and twitter so with that i want vance here <laughs> to give him a chance to talk he's our speaker chair for uh this year's ohio linux fest yeah so that basically means i'm in charge of wrangling all the people that we get to come in and and deliver the main track talks and then also uh get our keynote speakers in and we you know we basically put out an open call for for talks so Really, it's people who are coming to speak about things that they're experienced with, they're interested in. It's it's very much a community-driven event. It's not driven by a, a you know a vendor, a, a specific vendor or anything like that. It's really what are people interested in. Mm -hmm. Nice. And nice. how many talks were submitted compared to how many were selected this year? Um, let's see. I think we had something about about 70 presentations or 70 proposals and and we selected somewhere around 40 maybe a couple more than that yeah awesome awesome so i mean th th you mentioned like you know somebody that you know even has firefox on their browser i, I know like the linux like i feel like that scares some people away because it's like oh that's because i i've, I've I'm a, I'm a big advocate of Ubuntu myself. Mm -hmm. um, it's running. You can see it on on your on your chat window over there, um, and it's dual booting on many of these machines here. Um, and 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 I know every time I'm like you know hey this is it's I know it's it's not a scary Linux. It's it's as easy as whatever you're using. Probably easier. You don't have to really relearn a lot of stuff to do the the minimal stuff. You know uh, you know what. Of course, this is a different day and age where you know we're we have Linux in our pockets. We have Linux on. I'm wearing glass is running on Linux. Um, has Linux become uh, you know uh, you know I know you're you're of course doing more open source than, than that, but has Linux kind of become less scary in the in the right you know aspect versus like ten years ago for you guys? Well, I think uh, well that's probably what one of our 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 closing keynote is going to be kind of about. So it's going to be talking about the, the Linux that you don't see. So where are the places that, that this was still going to be relevant? I mean, as you noted, with, with Android, it's kind of mm -hmm. taken over uh, a huge percentage of, of our phones. And uh, it's, you know, I, I think the computing landscape is just different than, you know, what it was 10 years ago. Uh, where people thought that, okay, well, this is what the market is for, and then you find out, okay, there people invent new markets and mm -hmm. and, and new uses. 
it, it's, it's definitely come a long way since I remember my friend from high school. He was the one who's like on his Gateway 2000. Like, I'm, you know what? I'm not going to upgrade. I'm going to put Linux, Debian Linux on this thing. And he's showing me all the crazy bash scripts he's making and everything. And, mm-hmm. and, and for a very technical person, I was still like, I think I'll stick with my Windows. You know? <laughs> Well, uh, you know, they have a, a computer outreach, uh, I think it's computer, computer reach, mm-hmm. compu- re- com- computer reach down in, in um, Construction Junction, um, that where they, uh, they take computers that were donated, mm-hmm. and they put, uh, they put Linux on it. I don't know if it's Ubuntu. I believe so. And, and, they, and they give it out to uh, various charities, and I think they've given, like, hundreds away. I've, so, I've probably given, so like, these, 50 computers to them. So they, <laughs> right, right. So, so they're not putting Windows back on these computers. I mm-hmm. believe it's probably illegal or some sort of licensing thing that, that they can't put the when – when people donate these computers, they're putting uh, Linux operating systems on them, and – The people that are getting them are not computer geeks. They are just happy to have a computer to be able to do some email, do some browsing and things like that. And and they're just delighted to have a computer. So um, actually, um, a friend of mine was kind of down on her luck and she got a um, she got a computer through Computer Reach. And uh, she and her daughter adapted very easily to uh, Ubuntu as as opposed to um, as opposed to running uh, Windows operating system, and as a matter of fact, it's uh, even though there aren't the desktop is going dead, but for people that still have them, this is a perfect opportunity to switch to a Linux operating system because of Windows 8. Um, Best Buy has like two classes a week because of how many people returned their new Windows uh, laptops because they couldn't stand Windows 8. It was so foreign to them. Uh, compared to um, the Windows operating systems prior to that, so so they have to teach people a new operating system. Well, actually, mm-hmm. Ubuntu would be easier, you know, <laughs> just to learn the Ubuntu, and then you don't have to learn Windows 8. So this is um, a perfect opportunity to um, to try Linux, but um, but uh, rather than fight over who's better on the desktop operating system scene. Uh, Linux has just won the uh, the operating system um, contest with all of the uh, places that Linux is. Linux mm-hmm. in our servers, uh, in our cell phones, and in all kinds of strange uh, places. My daughter briefly worked for a company that wrote little scripts for um, embedded Linux in strange things like washing machines and coffee pots and uh, all kinds of places is turning up. So I think that's part of maybe that speech the Linux that you don't see so um, so uh, that's pretty cool so um, we're not beating the horse of you know change your operating system to Linux and fighting Microsoft we're, we're just moving ahead with mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. all the great things that it's right there. That, um, that Linux is doing you know so um, so that's been um, a really um, a really positive outcome. I do want to, I do want to put it a plug in, but because we've been I don't know how many times we've used the word Linux so far, but we have had uh, uh, quite a bit of BSD involvement with as well. So uh, FreeBSD has has been coming out a long time, and they're they're a sponsor again this year, and so we have talks about that. So it's really any any, any sort of free and open source software. Yeah. Do you do you record any of your sessions and and publish them later as a podcast? I, there's a bunch of stuff. unfortunately I won't be able to make it. Uh, but I'm interested in a lot of these sessions. Is is there the ability? I understand you have one on podcasting with Linux. We're gonna we're gonna try Android development. Um, are you recording or doing anything and then releasing these later? Or yeah, we're gonna try to do that right now. Uh, we we need to line up a volunteer in order to to help coordinate that. Um, and probably the the major bulk of the work is the editing uh, afterward. Um, but we have all, all of last year's talks uh, are up. On, if you go to archive.org and search for a High Linux Fest, um, all of 2013, all of 2012. In some previous years, it was a little more spotty because uh, the, the work of doing the editing kind of uh, didn't get them all up. I actually still have all the recordings sitting on hard drives. 
<laughs> we, Maybe one day so, I'll get to it. So them. those are audio recordings, and I nice. wanted to I wanted to mention that I just started a uh, YouTube channel for Ohio Linux Fest, and right now it just has a couple little promo um, uh, items there. But the interesting thing is if you go to list. Uh, where you can make a list of your uh, favorites on, um, what do they call that on YouTube? It's not... Like a playlist? Uh, playlist, yeah, yeah, a playlist. There's a, I'm trying to get a playlist together for everybody's uh, YouTubes that they've created of their speeches over the years because different people have had friends or companies have, um, have recorded their Ohio Linux Fest speeches. And I'm trying to get that playlist uh, together so as people... Um, videotape their um oh there it is as people videotape their um their speeches at ohio linux fest we can sort of archive them um through the uh through the playlist section of youtube and we will be videotaping a few of our um of our um uh uh our presentations but with so many tracks going at once how many tracks do we have at one point well, we've got Saturday. we've got six main tracks, and then plus we've got the open source solution stage and the career track. So you've got eight Oof. eight talks going at the Oof. same time. Sounds like the problem we have with PodCamp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, we, which ones do you turn your cameras yeah, yeah. on? You know, if we just bring as many cameras as we can. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> figure it out later. <laughs> so it'd be useful if people have friends or bring their own cameras, and then mm -hmm. let us know where they uploaded to YouTube, and we can. Um, we can sort of bilocate it on our uh, playlist mm -hmm. um, on the YouTube channel. So that's what we're hoping to do. Awesome. And I've had a couple of the speakers ask about, oh, is it okay for me to video? So I imagine, I, I don't know if they're doing it for themselves or if they're going to upload them, but uh, those may pop up as well. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so uh, it's coming up here. What was the dates again? Uh, the 24th, 25th, and 26th. I do. I don't know how we are with time, but I do have to mention this: that um, besides the fun and the, besides the fact that registration for enthusiast registration is free, F R E E. You know, um, we also do have um, some paid training, which is uh, right now four hundred and fifty dollars, which is really, really inexpensive for the uh, professional training that's going on there. And one of the tracks in the professional training, and that's on Friday, um, the 24th, is a cram session for the LPI um, certification. And uh, this year, um, you can take that cram course and then take one or two LPI exams on Saturday and Sunday uh, that will be offered uh, the certification exams. And if you're really smart or you don't need the cram course, you can just come in and, and take the exams. Um, we also have the BSD exam. So uh, when you go to the website, ohiolinux.org, and you go to sessions, and you look under the session for 4 o'clock on Saturday, there will be a link to the details on how to go to the LPI website and the BSD website and pay the, um, the certification exam fee so that they'll give you a number and bring it to the um, exam site so that you can take the exams at, at Ohio Linux Fest. And also the BSD likewise has a, um, has a, a link. And by going to um, sessions and then uh, to, the t to the times that the exams are being held, that's 10 o'clock Sunday morning or 4 o'clock Saturday afternoon, you can get all the details about how to do that. And I wanted to say that this is not only a tremendous opportunity because there just aren't that many testing locations east of the Mississippi. And the other thing is that the, um, the LPI exams will be discounted to $99 and they're regularly priced at $183. And uh, the Linux Essential exam is only 65 and the BSD exam is only $75. So, you know, that's my information that I have right at the moment. So this is 
a tremendous get out of work day ticket, <laughs> you know. So if you're looking, you know, it's 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 free for the conference, but if you if you want to get Friday off at least from work, you can say that it's for your career and get a, you know, authorized absence or something like that and mm-hmm. and come to Columbus for the Ohio Linux Fest. And a lot of, if you're in server technology or something, like a lot of times that employers will cover that too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I understand. So, yeah, yeah so. for sure, for sure. Uh, yeah, uh, John, you you mentioned your interest in this. I mean, are you? I know you you live you you work a lot in the kind of portable device and kind of interacting with servers and stuff. I mean, are you seeing a lot of Linux uh, uh, use in your work? I don't see it. Well, we see it on the server side. Yeah. Um, obviously, I, I'm interested in. Uh, I do a lot of mobility, so I'm interested in the the Android development. Um, seeing how that works. Finding time in the day to, to, to absorb all this information is, is, can, can be rough. And if, in this kind of setting, it ends up working out perfectly because you're you're not distracted by everything in your house and trying to watch a bunch of stuff. But I'm interested, too, from the fact of if I can watch this later, then I can watch it on the train. I can I can absorb it when I when I can really focus. Mm-hmm. Um, which is usually not when I'm at home, unfortunately. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I do see it in, in use uh, where where I work. I work for a large financial institution. Um, obviously, we have it on backend servers. Um, a lot of the the commands you were talking about, bash scripting and things, I write bash script for Mac OS. I did our our OS configuration. I think that's another point too. I mean. I, oh. uh, well, where's my shot? There we are. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people with the with Max that's Unix based, which is uh, Linux is basically an offshoot of that. So it's a, it's very kind of familiar, right? Oh yeah, the the Mac OS now is based on a a variant of BSD. So mm-hmm. you know, most of if you go into the terminal window on there, pretty much all the same commands that mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you would find under Linux are going to be there. And uh, sorry, sorry, John. Uh, did you have more? I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, that's okay. Yeah, I mean you covered it right there. Yeah, uh, and, and the other uh, big concern, and another thing, which you know, kind of drove back home the recent. There, there's been recent security concerns and, and discussions about what you know, you know. Uh, I think there was a wasn't there a bash vulnerability or something that mm-hmm. came up? Is that mm-hmm. the big one lately? Um, and you know. What is that response from the open source community? Because it isn't like it's not Apple saying, "Oh, we found this bug, we gotta fix this, and we'll send an update to all your phones." It is a community. It is everybody that writes Linux just does it. They're not getting paid. They're they're volunteers, um, and and this is the thing that that is the basis for your Macs, your phones, for every all of our phones because it isn't uh, iPhones a variant of OS X basically, right? I've, or is it kind of a weird offshooty thing? I'm not sure how that one. Worked. I think I think it might have been developed separately. I'm okay. I'm not real familiar with the iPhones. Okay, um, but but still, it, it's it's everywhere. But now we find these vulnerabilities, and we see how long have these been here. Who put it in there? You know, mm-hmm. and, and that's another conversation. I'm sure is going to be addressed in some context at the conference as well. Oh yeah, we have a whole uh, almost a, a whole day's worth of security talks. So there's <laughs> going to be plenty in there if if that's uh, the kind of thing you're looking at and. Just the way that that all the software is developed in the open, and you know, this is not a vulnerability that was, you know, kept quiet for a year and a half, mm-hmm. as you know, sometimes you see, um, because people think, oh, well, if we just if we don't tell anybody about it, nobody will, will yeah. figure it out. Yeah, you don't and, you don't have like a a, a white hat. Uh, hacker finding this thing keeps telling Apple, "Hey, fix this! Hey, fix this! Hey, I'm going to tell everybody, so you're going to have to freaking fix this soon." You know, I mean, cause that's generally the discussion usually with a Microsoft and an Apple that keeps things closed, right? Yeah, I mean, what basically what they try to do is, you know, they may delay it a little bit to say, "Okay, well, let's, you know, let's work on a fix and get that, get that put together and and get it out to the people who need to to get it." But you know, once once you start releasing an update, you know, the cat's out of the bag. There's no there's no way to keep it secret, so you really have to you have to be open in pretty much every aspect of how you're doing the development. Certainly, it's, Chrome OS is based on yes. Linux, isn't it? Yes. So I mean, and that's where I think kids and, and Chromebooks and, and a lot of schools they're either getting iPads or Chromebooks. Uh, I was talking to to someone I work with, and their daughter is part of one of the beta programs for the school and. Every student got a Chromebook, and actually, the, all the Chromebooks were actually given out for free 
um, a lot of the, the textbooks, she, and because she's part of like this test program, only half the textbooks are on, on the Chromebook. The other half, she actually still has physical textbooks. But this is where I see the youth going. It's going to be interesting if we'll see the same Adobe effect that we saw with Adobe giving everything out free to colleges, kids graduating, and then the, when they got to the workforce, we're like, what is this Quark Express thing you speak of? This is crazy. <laughs> um, so I wonder if as the youth of today grow up with the Chromebooks and, and iPod Touch and things of that nature, are we really going to see the Windows stronghold on that youth? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure Microsoft will still be around for many, many reasons. Um, maybe it'll be web-based. Maybe it'll be... Um, in other ways, shapes, and forms. But I think the more and more we start to use technology, the less and less the back end and what's under underneath the covers really matters. But when it comes down to it, things like Linux are running everywhere. Certainly. Certainly, yeah, and definitely that that's going to change. It's going to be, um, you know, I, I've, I've commented on the show before how easy it is for me to get up and running everything I was basically doing on my Mac over on this Windows 8 machine. You know, mm-hmm. it was, I'm down. You know, even going from my iPhone to my Android tablet, I'm downloading the same apps, logging in with the same Evernote and and Dropboxes and Google Drives across every device, and I'm ready to go in as long as it takes to download everything. You know, which mm-hmm. unfortunately for me is some big video files. But other than that, <laughs> uh, I'm pretty much good to go for all the rest of my work. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's only big tools like Final Cut, really. Like I like Final mm-hmm. Cut is the only reason I need to have a Mac in front of me most of the day. You know, um, just because that's what I'm dedicated to. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but that's yeah. You see that breaking yeah, Photoshop. Photoshop's in the cloud, guys. They're they're baiting that <laughs> thing right now. If you're still on educational, um, like that that. And how many cloud audio? How many cloud um, um, yeah, Nebulous, The guys at Alpha Lab right now. There's We Video doing cloud video, and there's some other. You know, YouTube has their own editor, and there's other options coming up too. Soon, we won't need this power because the power is going to be up there. You know some linux cloud mm-hmm. so awesome ohio linux fest ohio linux fest go check it out if you're in the pittsburgh area it's not that far of a drive away for a lot a lot of cool stuff and uh you know columbus and i can speak to this since you guys are you know in tune with what's going on in columbus um and i, I spoke to somebody else about this i've noticed there's a lot coming out of columbus i remember like the my, the view over here of columbus was how depressed it was it's you know you know it's really kind of in the dumps 10 years ago i guess um but i can't believe you know this and, and a few other things how many businesses i i hear are coming from columbus these days um it, it seems like the area is kind of uh you know a few years ago what pittsburgh was where it's like here's all this kind of building startup y kind of energy uh, can, can you speak a little bit like you know for those in pittsburgh that don't know what's going on in columbus right now well i mean of course uh you know you have ohio state there which is you know huge uh i don't even know what their enrollment is these days probably uh i don't know tens and tens of thousands if not a hundred thousand but uh they're uh, you, you've gotten a lot of spinoffs from that. I mean, you have you have a lot of mature industries there. You have, uh, I guess, uh, the uh, the nationwide insurance is probably the big one. Uh, they uh, we've got some of the people that uh, volunteer with us uh, are working for some startups in, in town. Um, it's it's an interesting it, it's an interesting area because you have sort of the you also have the intersection there because that's it's also the state capital. So you have like all the government there. Um, but it's it's really it, it, there's more there than you think because it, it's the it's the the biggest city in Ohio uh, because you've got just the, this whole big area surrounding it. Mm-hmm. So really, there's there's a lot going on. I, I I only visit there a few times a year, so I guess I'm I'm maybe not the, the person to, to give you the full wow. story on it. But I've been visiting their social. They've been visiting their meetup groups <laughs> virtually. Mm-hmm. And uh, they have a huge tech meetup group that there's really? something in Pittsburgh called Free and Almost Free, where this guy named Frank has like all these people jump in and post their free or almost free meetups on the Free and Almost Free meetup group. And this is what's happening in a technology meetup group in Columbus. There's something like 
200 groups that have jumped into the the uh, the free and uh, the uh, technology meetup group. There's the free and almost free in Pittsburgh, but the technology group in Columbus is really amazing. They have all different types of technology and I vicariously join a few and try to subvert <laughs> subversively drop information about Ohio Linux Fest in there but um, one of the groups that I just just joined today in Columbus and there might be a similar one uh, in Pittsburgh is the Bitcoin meetup group in Columbus uh, we're going to be showing a, a Bitcoin documentary that's hot off the presses it's called the rise and rise and rise of the Bitcoin and uh, and that will be at seven o'clock on Friday night. And I I went into the Bitcoin <laughs> group uh, meetup group of Columbus to uh, to let them know about that. But uh, technology is big there, and just like we have Bakery Square where we have the tech shop uh, next to Google, there they have something called the Columbus Innovation Lab. And one of our uh, speakers is Alex Bandar. He's the um, He's the keynote speaker for uh, Friday at 4 o'clock, and he is the head of that uh, innovation lab. And um, he's going to be talking all about um, open source in uh, the maker community. And uh, as a matter of fact, the, uh, that, that whole scene of do-it-yourself, innovation, startups, all that is kind of wrapped into the, um, the whole create your own program, create your own open source program. It, it's such a, a perfect marriage of, of makers and open source programmers that um, that's going to be um, a theme throughout the um, conference this year. Um, actually, um, Katie might want to come to meet uh, Ruth Suley, who is the community manager for uh, Red Hat, who's going to be our uh, keynote speaker what time is she coming on at, at six on Saturday, I believe? Uh, yes. I and think so. uh, and she's going to yeah. be talking about um, is is are is making are makers default to open source? Should makers be making things in open source uh, programming? And, and is that synonymous makers and open source? So she's going to uh, give us a really good um, overview of that being the community leader for um, Red Hat. I'm really looking forward. And all, our, all of our keynotes are really going to be great. This isn't to, you know, put one above the other. But um, we have such a tremendous opportunity of shifting from the my, de my desktop order operating system is better than yours kind of discussion into one about, hey, let's create something new with these raspberries and Arduino boards and Internet of Things and nice. and just as everything is coming together paradoxically we're also having people building things to live off the grid and sustainability and no i'm going to do it all myself and you know so so both of that is going on simultaneously and 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 that's really breathing a, a big fresh air into um into the linux and open source uh movement awesome awesome go check it out all right let's get to some other awesome things of the week um, you guys can stick around, comment on, on anything you have, any, any thoughts on as we go here. Uh, let's go. Uh, uh, Chilla, I know you got something. So I, I actually put this in, and then I went down through the notes, and I saw that you had actually added the, the Sway topic. The I just Microsoft. deleted it. I deleted it when I saw this. <laughs> I couldn't get past the name because it, like, it sounds like a slang term from Batman Beyond. The, the, the video they show, so anyone can go to Sway.com. Microsoft has a preview out there. You can sign up for it. I'm wondering how they're figuring out. Is everyone going to get it? Or are they going to only invite certain people? So I went through all four or five of my my mailboxes and signed them all up. Um, <laughs> I have yet to get an invite, but I am on the list, says said mailboxes. Um, what, what I'm interested in seeing about this is the GUI actually looks really, really good. And what this allows you to do is kind of create a hybrid blog slash PowerPoint slash social media type website um, with all your content and content from other sites as well. And they, from the looks of it, they've done a really good job going cross-platform from Microsoft OSs to iOS to Android, etc. Um, I'm interested 
to see a how this plays out and b where they expect people to host this content because if you watch the video closely everyone's working on Mm -hmm. sway.com and this is listed as potentially being another app in the office bundle um i'm personally shopping for cloud storage right now and based on pricing and then whatnot the what you get with office 365 and OneDrive and the cross-platform capabilities of that built in are kind of pushing me in that direction if this is actually a decent platform it would definitely sway me in that direction um but i wonder but that's are they how they got the name a play for social media yeah so is this going to be some kind of hybrid facebook myspace google plus see you know you 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 got i think you've gotten into this deeper than i had a chance to um but my impressions uh initially what this this is kind of a microsoft version of what we've seen with uh storify right like where that you can bring all these things in from all these different like social media places for instance is is that accurate or is it or and i'm not 100 percent sure because i I, I don't a hundred percent understand where the contents end up ends up being hosted. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of a lot of the talk on here about what it is is very ambiguous. Yeah, and do you? It sounds like to even view the content, you need kind of their app per mm-hmm. se. So is this web based? Is it like I'm I'm interested in seeing how this plays out because. The WYSIWYG and how it looks is phenomenal. The the ability to kind of have templates and, and create themes and, and have it recommend themes based on, on what you have in there, I really, really like the idea. And the look and feel that they kind of show you, to me, really, really works across multiple devices and multiple screen form factors, touch versus mouse, et cetera. It looks like they really thought this one through. Oh, wow. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they execute it. So they actually have a sample on here. So I opened the one over Red Panda, which took a little bit to load. Oh, it's still loading, apparently. And this is like a fully, I think it's still kind of waiting to respond to me. But like it's got folders kind of floating and they, they zoom up and everything. Um, I don't know if this is terribly, I don't know overly interesting but i look at it as is that so i'm 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 probably way too much of a geek and i actually really enjoy um slideshare and i actually pull a lot of content from slideshare um to me this is like a online powerpoint type thing yeah but i could see a lot of people using this for like family photo albums (laughs) Because um, we video. need another way to show family photo albums, right? It's not. That's not just a boring timeline feed from from Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I guess you know, education is. I guess education and presentation is the only. Like, I feel like there needs to be a little bit more to this. Yeah, but I, and that's where I want to see. Like, are all these going to be hosted on Sway.com and people are going to sign up and we're all going to be sharing these? multimedia type presentation esque concepts. Cause it's almost like you created a blog that's to me more fun to navigate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but not terribly like I'm still kind of figuring out the navigation because I'm just kind of clicking on things. So the I was watching I did the um biography how to tie a Celtic knot table. It's the, so there's six examples. Um, it's the last one on there. That one you just kind of click through. There's a thing in the bottom right-hand corner and you just next, 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 and it kind of animates through. The example they show in the video of the girl it's doing kind of her school report, um, it looks like she's kind of clicking through and it pans around. So looking at the aquarium one, it's just top down, but a lot of the other ones kind of go 
and follow certain motions. And I mean, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see, like I said, where this goes, what they do with it. Interesting. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I mean, it could be, it could, is it, hopefully another play to get in the classroom, I guess. They need that, considering all the stuff we're talking about about open source lately <laughs> um, that everybody else is doing. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I, just, I think it's one of those kind of weird side things they're doing. But uh, they're trying anything to make, make Office more than... I mean, they really do need to make Office other than people that are like, uh, I know where everything is in Word. I know how to format Word. That's why I'm going to pay for Word. You know, mm-hmm. um, like people like me, they're like, ah, Drive does X, Y, and Z, everything that I would ever want from Office. So now Office needs to have the, well, this is our outside the box thing you can only get with us. You know, this is our mm-hmm. Adobe Photoshop that you can only get with us. You know, when there's really, really no alternative for this sort of thing. So, you know, I don't know. I, I keep looking at this thing and thinking of it as like really a replacement for like like Macromedia Director back in the day, you know. Um, but a little I easier to director. do it. You love Director? What is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> it was a nightmare. Um, anyways, uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, daughters, what do you got? I have that. Um... GitHub is partnering with a bunch of different, um, like DigitalOcean, Unreal Engine, and others to give uh, students uh, free developer tools, which I thought was pretty cool, especially as a uh, student. Uh, They start from age 13 and up, and it's like uh, cloud sharing, um, SSL, um, what else, Uh, game development tools, uh, essentially just kind of a a place for students to play with coding and partner with other students or their teachers, and instead of having to take... um, you know, a digital or some sort of memory and go from one place to another and carry around your little flash friend, you could upload it to the same place and work on it together and an invitation for more to work on code, which I think is pretty cool. Nice. Nice. I know, I know GitHub's, GitHub's been uh, kind of the de facto place for a while for code. I mean, again, Linux community and everything, right? Um, so kind of, kind of nice to see them uh, opening up for schools. So and Unreal Engine too. That's, I don't know how the development goes for Unreal Engine, but um, but I mean that's everywhere. Just about every the games I'm loading on my phone are running on the thing, so mm-hmm. <laughs> it's pretty significant. Awesome, awesome. Um, uh, my yeah, I, I got a side awesome thing. Um, Hollywood Theater uh just opened with their digital projector here uh in Dormont. Uh, I got to see it. I got to see the hard drive that they use and everything. I, I talk about that at length on uh, Rambling Movie Minutes. So go check that out at uh, thatramblingreview.com, uh, episode 47. I talk about it towards the end there uh, in the movie I watched on, uh, Two Faces of January. Uh, so so that, that, was, that was pretty cool. But I want to talk about uh, Tiny. I think that's what we're calling it. I think this is a Kevin Rose joint over at Google uh, from their ventures, if I recall. Uh, but it's a little app. I mean, Nobody I know is on this. And it's kind of Snapchatty that you go in and and do a picture or a quick video, um, and it will only last for 24 hours. Um, but everything is just this wall of videos and pictures that auto plays. So it's just like it's just fun, you know. Um, I'm following, you know, the you know big people I know that that showed up on it. I can't figure out how to really kind of mass invite people, like say, hey, people, go follow me on here. Um, I don't want to be the annoying person that texts everybody to go download the app, uh, which it kind of wants me to do. Uh, if you're on video, you can kind of see that like kind of square interface. You just open it up and you see all these pictures, all these, all this moving. Um, a lot of us just kind of apparently just put the video on themselves and move it around their head, you know, because you need something quick that kind of sticks out and stuff. and You can favorite it and everything. There's no purpose for this otherwise, other than like a group visual party. Um, but I've been just putting random pictures on it for the last uh, the last week, and I, I can't stop doing it. Um, so, so you got me. I'm 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 jumping on the yes, I'm friendly, on, the, on the, the bandwagon. Where's my phone at? Where is my phone? I lost my phone. It's under the pizza. Um, <laughs> uh, but go check it out. I'm there. I'm Sorgatron, like everywhere else on there. Um, and uh, yeah, like a fun little free app to do. I don't know what they're going to do with it. I don't know what this. I don't know how you monetize something like this, uh, but <laughs> to me, it's like expiring vines. It's yeah. a, we're expiring half expiring vine, half expiring. It's Instagram. like a it's like a vine collage, isn't it? That's, that, that's funny. So I, I 
opened the app and there was the option to sign in with Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, and then the sign in with Instagram disappeared. So I guess I only have two options. Mm -hmm. um, if I sign in with one or the other, does it auto find like all my friends? I think it does. I think it does like find everybody that's on there. I don't know what it, I don't know which one I signed up with. I don't know how to like kind of go in. It's kind of like it's it's missing a few features, right? Um, and actually, here here's my feed here if you're on the video. And you can see there's a lot of movement going on. Uh, I think people are kind of leaning more towards uh, the videos lately. So you do get a lot of movement, and it just kind of scrolls up. Uh, although, I got to warn you, that button in the center, you touch it, it's going to take a picture and broadcast it right away. So don't play with this on the toilet. <laughs> okay, guys? Almost, so this will be able to almost read had a close call. my timeline, see who I follow, follow new people, uh -oh. update my profile, and post tweets for me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, while he considers those, uh, let's give a shout out to our friends over at Slice on Broadway. They provide uh, the pizza. Did you guys get pizza yet? When you came in, it's right. It should be right there. I don't oh, know where okay. she put it. I've been busy over here behind the console. But uh, Slice on Broadway, we got to check out. Daughters, you were down there too. Uh, check mm -hmm. out their new location down in Carnegie. We finally made it. Yes, thank goodness. It was delightful. It's the same pizza we love from up here down the street uh, along the tracks here in Beachview in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, but also in Carnegie. Uh, so the parking's a little easier. And Well, actually, no, the park's not bad up here. But if you're scared of giant trains... This is your location. Um, so please go check them out. They, they always treat us great down there. Um, and, uh, and treat us here great on Tuesdays in our, in our guest in studio. Um, so go check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. Go, go look up the Slice on Broadway Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to kill you. <laughs> it's on his Instagram. Um, there was an incident, apparently, with the owner of Slice on Broadway trying to get into the lock. He got locked out of the one location, and they uh, had an incident with a ladder that you need to go check out. So go look up Slice on Broadway on Instagram and star it and, and comment on the Instagram of him and his ladder incident that you heard about it on the Awesome Cast. So he knows exactly where it's coming from. <laughs> Um, so yeah, go check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. Let's hop into some news, guys. What is what is hot out there right now? Um, well, we really talked about Windows 10 last week for the most part. I, I mentioned it early, Chromebook is getting uh, Adobe Photoshop. Uh, well, Adobe had a huge list of announcements. They had a lot of stuff this week. I couldn't even keep up with all of it. Because I, I posted later on down on the thing about it. I mean, they have... Apps galore coming out. I mean, it's it's a little. I, I'm excited for the Chrome, and I think we talked briefly about the Chromebook and Photoshop. Um, it's only available, I thought, for beta for educational educational uh, subscribers, which I which I just downgraded from my educational from being a teacher a year ago, three months ago. So I just missed the boat on trying this out. But it's just, um, it, and it's actually, you know, it, I read a little more into it, and they were very much, they were really pushing the ideas like, well, we were working uh, uh, largely with Google to make this happen. Um, and I think one of these other announcements, I saw they were partnering with Microsoft to make something happen on on uh, for better uh, integration, say, with like Windows 8. So Adobe always seems standoffish, you know, like how long did it take to get a, a you know, a, 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 a universal version of Adobe Photoshop? My CS4 just lags because it still is running on the old uh, PowerPC uh, uh, version. They, it feels like Adobe's playing fair with others or playing with others a little better these days. You get that impression, John? I definitely get that impression, especially as they they're, they're also hit trying to hit that cross platform. Uh, or, I'm wondering, are they seeing something that we're not, where they realize they need to be everywhere possible? I mean, when you look at the the apps they're releasing from kind of their virtualized, it sounds like Photoshop streaming for Chrome. They have Adobe Premiere Clip for iOS. They came out with one, two, three, four, five new iOS apps. Wow. 
and then they updated three of their existing. So, and and I think when they came out with Photoshop at first too, it it launched first actually on Android. So, I just see them trying to hit hit every platform they possibly can. Um, I'm excited to try out some of their new stuff, like Premiere Clip, um, which is like a Premiere. Start start using kind of a Premiere Easy editing right from your phone. Um, and then I'm not familiar. Are they they are they partnered with um, Paper and Pencil by Fifty Three or did they buy them? Because oh, one yeah, of the other right. things they came out with was Adobe Brush CC, which I'm guessing CC is Creative Cloud, but it's a brush creation tool that plays nice with high-end stylus, styluses, style, yeah, I think it should be styli, but whatever, um, like Pencil by 53, and then can, and it can actually be shot over to other Adobe products easily. Um, most of these things are also free, so keep, in, keep that in mind. Um, and, but a lot of them like, are like they're interacting with like I've seen some of these interact with like Illustrator and Photoshop. So you're already these are these are like value adds basically, right. um, just like they've had the apps for a while where you can have uh, palettes and stuff like on your iPad or your iPhone that interact directly with Photoshop. You know, just like extensions. You know, instead of me having two giant screens to put all my stupid palette floaty things, um, you can have a bunch of phones <laughs> lying around your desk. I guess. Um, yeah, I don't see any indication. No, I'm on a different thing. Wait, wait, is Pencil by 53 selling an actual pencil? Or no, yes. pencil, there's, there's, so they're selling a physical pencil for your tablet, and then they have the paper app. Yes. I did not, right. I did not know they extended on to this. The, the, I'm not a huge fan of the look. At, I've never actually held one in my hand. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the look. This is a curious concept. Um, it, it, to me, it looks like a rather large, thick um, pencil, like you would use to, like you would get at Home Depot to work. work yeah, on yeah. I feel like this is something that's like, uh, that might be pleasing to like designers, right? Maybe a little bit. I, 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 I'd rather see something that's like a fine tip. I love you can flip the pencil and it knows to erase. That's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, beyond that, I'm going to check in the, so, some of those apps, probably play with those a little bit here. At least the ones that deal with Photoshop and Lightroom. I've, I've honestly haven't even downloaded Lightroom since I downgraded to that package. Um, but I haven't really needed it. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, Chilla, you got one about, uh, Apple TV and HomeKit? So what they're saying is, and, and it, it's pretty much a reliable type of source. They're saying that people have been um, optioned into a beta, and I'm trying to find that article now. Yeah, people have been optioned into a beta, and when iOS 8 um, sees the Apple TV in the new beta, it'll and both devices are prompted or logged into iCloud, um, it'll open up a prompt to ask the user if they want to use the Apple TV to control their home remotely. So when you think about it, your Apple TV, you're obviously most people probably aren't taking it with them everywhere they go. So the the Apple TV is going to be your secure gateway back into your house when you're away on an iPad or iPhone, huh. or potentially even I am guessing some kind of uh, laptop. But um, I thought it was an interesting way of getting I, I've always when I don't like leaving agents running on a, on a laptop or desktop or whatnot to be able to remote back in from the outside and we've, we've talked about this with um, things like uh, team viewer um, and log me in um, I would feel a little more comfortable having a piece of hardware that was controlling that access not just jump to this desktop and then jump from that desktop to this desktop. Almost like a remote VPN gateway to get back into your house. So to me, this is exciting. Um, I'll be interesting, interested to see where they go with this and who's going to be the first products that kind of key into this. I'm hoping it's Wemo because I just got a light switch and a uh, plug outlet type thing. 
Awesome. So. Awesome. Can I, can I hop over to Google for a moment? Um, uh, you guys know Chrome Canary is the like early version Chrome. Yeah, that's where they kind of put the experimental features in before we actually see it in uh, Chrome 50, whatever we might be on these days. I can't remember the number. I know we were just in like probably the 30s last week, and I'm sure it's like updated five times since then, um, the way they go. Uh, but another cool... Uh, you gotta love the quirkiness of, of, of Google. They uh, okay. You guys know the dinosaur you get when you're not able to connect to the internet. Like even when it makes me sad, at least a little dinosaur makes me feel better about myself. Well, he's now I'm just gonna lose a lot of time until the internet comes back or or fail to uh, fix the internet because now the little dinosaur is gonna be an endless runner game where he's running through the desert jumping over cactuses. <laughs> <laughs> and you can control them and you can control them yeah he'll start running uh, uh, yeah. when, you, when you press the space bar the t-rex will immediately jump the ground beneath him will extend to the right and he'll start running and there's a little <laughs> score in there <laughs> that's perfect that's absolutely perfect um so another another feature ad if you're in that uh chrome browser or, or chromebook um a little more serious uh, uh um i got uh, this actually passed along from uh, Sven Hosford over on our Journal of Lifestyle Medicine podcast that we do. Uh, it's over on SorgatronMedia.com, JournalLifestyleMedicine.com. Um, man, I've wanted a GoPro for a while, guys. Mm -hmm. I've, the, the, the playing with the Google Glass has kind of like kept me from putting the purchase on the on the GoPros, right? Um, but this this might have to this this might put me over the edge for it. So. Uh, the guy in Arc here from Cena. Actually, this was an email we were like uh, the, the marketing email we saw from from GoPro. You can live stream. Uh, actually, the live stream app now connects with GoPro for you to broadcast in real time. So, so remember that Google Glass demo from a couple years ago at Google I/O where they 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 sky dove um, and did that. Now I mean, anybody can do that uh, with a GoPro. You don't need a you don't need the fifteen hundred dollar this thing on your face. Uh, and the GoPro will, will you know stand up a little bit better. Um, so, uh, I can't wait to see, um, what happens with this, uh, when, when people have access to, to live streaming GoPros, you know, um, so a really cool kind of video geeky thing on my side of things. So, um, with that, I actually, we, we have a lot of plugs here on the way out. So I want to make sure we have time for that. Um, first of all, of course, Ohio Linux Fest. Will be mentioned that in the next couple of weeks leading into it. Oh wait, she's got the uh, what you got over there? Is that the flyer? Poster. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The future of free Ohio Linux Fest. Is is the is, is the penguin the penguin open source? Like, <laughs> there's no copyright on the penguin, right? The penguin is well, Tux. Yes, Tux well, the penguin. I, I don't know. This it's is just because he was from Norway. Okay, because yeah. Linus was from Norway. That awesome. Tux is hmm. the, do you have yeah, well, that well, that's a variant. The I mean, the original one was done by uh, Larry Ewing, I think, from uh, Texas, uh, and basically he said he says you can use it, but you know, just let people know where you got it from. Nice, there's nice. No oh, real, and there's yeah. been like I've seen like Tux cart games on, on oh, the phone yeah, too no, and stuff. He's all over the place. An infinite variety. That's great. I just uh, just a random curiosity uh, uh, with that. Um, so, uh, there's that. And you also, uh, uh, Susan, you, you had something about CMU. Is that this weekend? Yeah, there's something going on. There's like a, uh, the perfect storm is occurring in, in Oakland because Pitt is, out at Pitt, they're having Oakland days or something like that. And they have from three o'clock Friday until five o'clock or Saturday, they have all of this stuff going on at the same time. There's this, um, there's this uh, CMU weekend for mm -hmm. alumni and students and everything. And uh, they have um, in the School of Com Computer Science, all these presentations are going on, which I believe are free. But if you look at the fine print, it said registration is closed, which I was like kind of bummed because I wanted to try to smuggle my way in to hear some of these presentations <laughs> but uh but it does say that they're going to do live streaming and hopefully mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that will mean that it'll be archived and they are using well actually but i can guarantee it well because uh, at least in some aspects uh it looks like they're using the google live stream uh because they're already on the page that what i'm showing here over at uh 
uh, geez, that's a URL. Uh, <laughs> it, so this is around the 25th univer uh, anniversary. Uh, I, I guess if you look at SCS25 in uh, Carnegie Mellon University, uh, you'll probably find it in Google. Um, but yeah, they have they have several uh, kind of live streams already set up here in time with their countdowns and everything. Um, and I know if you if you use YouTube, you, you that's why I love using it. We just started a few weeks ago here. Uh, if you use YouTube Live, it's automatically saved to it, just like when you do a hangout or something. So it will be you know, and hopefully they they keep them up there and available for you guys to check out around that. So awesome, awesome. Uh, yeah, so, and so. Carnegie Carnegie um, Museum is free too on Saturday, part of Radical Days. Really. Yeah, and so everything. Why am I happening. out of town this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Baltimore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, really cool. Us, uh, oh god, Cirkin Piantino from uh, Facebook, New York. I'm sure I butchered that. Uh, so that's going to be a cool one. Uh, ro robotics at tipping point. I love the robotics at CM. I had the chance about a year ago to talk to some people from the robotics department. And it was like the best day ever. Um, Awesome. Uh, and just a lot of, if you look, dig computer science, I mean, how many tech podcasts you listen to that CMU comes up? You know, I mean, any chance you get to keep an eye on what's happening back there. Um, I was talking to somebody yes. that, I was talking to somebody from one of the local stations. They're like, I don't know why we don't just say, just go to CMU and be like, hey, what's up lately? Because you probably did something awesome this week. Wow. Um, you know, it, it's. It was the original home of the Western Pennsylvania Linux Users Group. Oh. That makes uh, sense. Makes that complete started sense. at CMU, <laughs> and I, uh, I I got some some personal ties too. I have uh, an aunt and an uncle graduated engineers from CMU, mm -hmm. uh, so um, and I think one had a hand and gorilla glass that's on your iPhones. Um, so uh, really awesome. It's really cool. It's one of those things. It's like, hey guys, it's here. You know, like it's really cool stuff happening in our backyard, and and a lot of smart people over there. Um, cool. Uh, we also have. Oh, some quick shout out stuff happening around the network. Um, really cool talk with uh, Dr. Nancy Marammer, and I think we're going to be having her on in a couple more a couple weeks from now on the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. Um, she did a book that I'm going to pull up here, uh, but a great conversation over on Seclair.com. It's on the uh, Sorgatron Media Everything feed on iTunes and Stitcher as well. Um, we talked about the media and the mental health, which is basically what her, her new book is about. Uh, talking about social connections, uh, how we're using uh, you know our Facebook social media and everything, and kind of the effect that has to people or the kind of people that have a bad effect on that, uh, you know, vice versa. Really good discussion about that. Her book is Get Real, Produce Your Own Life. Like I said, we'll have her on the Journal Life style medicine podcast that we usually do at 4 p.m here on tuesdays uh coming up in the next couple weeks um so but in the meantime you can check that podcast out at seclair.com s-e-c-l-a-i-r-e-r.com it's french um and uh check out the educational grand rounds for that from this week where that's uh that's something i do on mondays uh noon uh where we always uh we, we get together with uh, uh practitioners from seclair and the uh, students and always have a guest and uh have uh, some pretty interesting kind of health mindfulness uh holistic you know the whole the whole spectrum um uh discussions over there uh over at my personal podcast at sorgatron.com awesome cast listeners might be interested in uh kind of my my uh recap of talking about national podcast day last week as well as uh the return of an old website i might have done that i might be bringing back after a little bit of uh you know uh inspiration this week um and also uh, uh katie i know you you'll be interested in this if you haven't seen this already life shell is on kickstarter mm -hmm. uh we talked to them out of Alpha Lab year here a few months ago, um, they got to ask a question to Mr. Obama when he's in town, uh, when when they were talking about uh, all the all the startups and everything. Uh, but if you go over there, you can pick up the Whistle iPhone case. Uh, these are the guys that were making uh, uh, cases, and they wanted to do uh, some other uh, software-based stuff on your phone as well to help curb. Kitty, I think you can describe this better than I can. It, it's um, one of the main things is, is it's it's a case that you would have um, was a person kind of personal protection instead of having any sort of because there was a talk for a while about having some sort of uh, shock where you could take them down with your cell phone. This is more of a spray of uh, a mace type variety uh, to protect yourself. Also would uh, tell people if you didn't make it where you were going, um, kind of you would have a set up an alert. For maybe a friend or family member that you would trust in case you didn't get home. Mm -hmm. So this is their first kind of go to manufacturing of the concept that we talked about a few months ago. Um, this this is actually the the whistle version, 
right? So this is actually, it, it emits a large LED noise alarm. Um, and, uh, you know, again, if you're like, you know, somewhere in the dark alley and you're not feeling safe or, you know, uh, feel like you might be uh, in trouble, it's something to help you out there. Um, I really hope they do come around and do a, do a taser version. Because that would be, I'll just taste. There was, we've seen some taser cases in the past, I think. Yeah. You know, so. Um, so go check that out. Uh, they are, I believe, lifeshell.com, L-I-F-E-S-H-E-L. Let me double check. That's a dot com. Um, just Google them. You'll find them out. Uh, you'll find them real quick. And we've been tweeting, of course, over on the Twitters. Um, uh, so with that, anything else you guys have uh, co uh, coming up you have in mind? Uh, Chilla? Microsoft's making an announcement towards the end of the month. I think, Another uh, one? Yeah, some of these are going to be cloud-related. Um, they're claiming that Apple may have a um, talk next, I've heard next Tuesday, the 16th, February, 14th. I've heard the 16th, so maybe it's not the Yeah, 14th. I've, I've seen the 16th as well. And um, this is ideally probably going to be our um, iPad event, right? Yeah, iPad, Yosemite. Um, I think... I think this one's going to be interesting because they have too many things sitting up on the shelf that they need to talk about. Um, Apple TV, like bring Apple it on. Pay. Come on, Apple TV. Just update that thing. Come on, give me apps. I've heard, I've heard rumblings that we may see at least a minor upgrade to that. Good. Um, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see what they have coming up. So you got those two. And I'm waiting. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing we're going to hear something from Google soon about around Android L. Um, at least I haven't seen anything written in stone. Um, on releasing release around that, we usually see that closer to Halloween. Um, KitKat was kind of covered right after I think Halloween last year in, in early November, so we should probably be seeing something from them soon. Um, and I think that covers the three major uh, mobile and and OS device vendors. Awesome. Great awesome. time for the holidays. Get your get your Christmas presents ready. <laughs> and we'll be talking about that. Well, that's Wednesday, so we actually will miss that. So in two weeks, we'll probably talk. We'll probably be wildly speculating next week about the Apple announcement. So there's a. I, I saw a rumor that, today that was that was the iPad Pro runs both iOS and full blown Mac. I OS want that apps. iPad Pro to be like a <laughs> twenty inch iPad. Like this is the thing that Malengo's going to replace his giant twenty five inch Wacom tablet with that he carried to the Comic Con that one time. Um, but uh, but we'll be talking about that and, and a lot of other fun stuff. I just saw the I I'm sorry I just saw the, the out of the corner of my eye the title the toilet app. Uh, in the show notes and it just broke me um, but you can join us next week and help us come up with some awesome names like the chat room has been all night live that's sorgatronmedia.com around 6 30 p.m eastern time uh every tuesday night and uh you can also hit us up at at awesomecast on twitter awesomecast on uh facebook on google plus please subscribe to us on the youtubes on uh itunes spreaker iHeartRadio and Stitcher, and please comment, favorite, um, you know, whatever. You know, give us some feedback. Give us some comment. I, I, I put out last week, post podcast day, uh, National Podcast Day. Uh, you should you should make a note all those podcasts that you're listening to. I'm not just saying nine because I don't. I, I I'm I'm commenting on the ones I listen to too. Um, uh, put your put your righties where your mouth is and and uh and let them know because that really helps out those podcasts if you dig those podcasts if you're not uh, submitting to a patreon or anything like that um you know it's a way for them to find new users because that helps with their ranking it helps it get out there it helps the discoverability so 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 help a podcast out comment one i don't even did care you, if it's one you, of mine did, from last week's show did you post a list of where what podcast you were listening to because i grabbed a bunch and may pick pick up a bunch of podcasts. That I think I neglected to do that. Crappy. You didn't. You didn't have a. You didn't have a list. So I had to like try to search and hunt and peck for the stuff. That oh you were no! About. So it's all in. It's all in here. It's all in here. It, 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 I think that's a great blog for you to write about. You know, this is what I'm listening to. I. You know, I actually do that. If you go uh, on the Sorgatron.com one, I, I do. I like once a year. I'll be like, this is what I'm listening to now and why. And a lot of those shows haven't changed to be honest. Okay. Um, but cool. I, I mean, you're, but you're, some but you're right. Um, um, you're right. It's probably about due for me to do another one to kind of update that. Um, but again, it's like a lot of that probably hasn't changed too much. Like I probably add like 
four regular ones. Um, uh, where am I at in my stuff? Oh, thanks to Mike Allen at Mike Allen PR for helping with the notes and the tweets all night long. Everybody, hey, while you're at it and commenting on your favorite podcast, wink. Um, make sure to the the hit up at Mike Allen PR and thank him for how he's uh, helping out here with the podcast all night every Tuesday. Um, so uh, with that, thank you to our awesome chat room hopping all night. Thank you to our guests in studio. Uh, if I find a button, I don't have too many mice. There we go. Uh, Vance and Susan, check out OhioLinux.org. Chilla is at Chilla on the Twitters. Katie's at K Dutters on the Twitters. And 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 she may be a zombie or something at the Scare House. Go check out the Scare House before it goes away. Scarehouse.com. I'm trying to find five minutes to go out there and do that, too. Um, yes, see me. What's that? Come see me. Go to the basement, too. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, and with that, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com.